In the previous video, we talked about something known as the 20 different types of amino acids. I said that we need to have 20 different types of amino acids to build uh, all the necessary proteins in our body. Now, from those 20 different types of amino acids, how many different types of proteins can we build? Um, well, the answer is infinity, by the way. Now, why do I say infinity? Now, the reason, because there is an infinite possibilities. Now, let's say the protein is a polypeptide chain made up of five amino acids. I'm drawing out a polypeptide chain here, which is made up of five amino acids. Now, for the first amino acid on the left hand most side, there are 20 possible amino acids that can be put there. I've listed out all those amino acids, all those possible amino acids that can be there. You don't have to memorize that, by the way. Just basically saying that these are the possibilities. And for the second position amino acid, there are also 20 possibilities. Third position, 20 possibilities. Fourth position, 20 possible amino acids. Fifth position, same thing. So the possible combinations of proteins that can be made consisting of five amino acids is 20 times 20 times 20 times 20 times 20 or 20 to the power of five. And there are 3.2 million combinations of polypeptide chains that can be made. What that means is, in this world, if there are proteins made up of five amino acids, there can be 3.2 million different types of them. That's a lot, okay? Uh, let's say, let's say if the protein or the polypeptide chain is made up of eight amino acids, then the possible combinations of polypeptides will be 20 to the power of 8, which gives you a grand total of 25 billion, 600 million possible combinations of polypeptide chains. And each of these chains will have slightly different characteristics as well. So it's impossible to know all of them. And plus, not all... Uh, some polypeptide chains can go up to 50 amino acids. Some polypeptide chains can be up to like 60 or 70 or 90 amino acids. So if you try to make the, if you try to do calculate the possible combinations, it will be 20 to the power of 90, which will give you, oh God, it's just too much to compute in that case. So do you actually have to know all the different types of proteins in the world? Obviously not. It is impossible because there are proteins in the world currently existing that scientists have not fully cataloged. We don't know all the proteins existing in different organisms in the world right now. We cannot know the proteins that have existed in the times of creatures that have uh, that are now extinct. Because these creatures are extinct, they would have had different types of proteins as well. And one important thing too is um, we don't know that we don't know of proteins that will exist in the future due to creatures evolving, mutations that have happened. So it's just impossible to catalog that. Um, so as a student, you do not know, you do not need to know all the different types of proteins that are existing in the world right now. Uh, but we do have to cover some important ones as well. So let's talk about some of the proteins that scientists have discovered. Okay, and they have tried to uh, represent. So we have different types of proteins. I'm going to give you four that you should know, not immediately. And I'm going to show you how they look like. All right. Uh, over here, you have a three-dimensional representation of a glucose transport protein. The function of this protein is to transport glucose molecules across the cell membrane. Don't memorize this yet. Just showing it to you. I'm going to show you also something known as collagen. This is a protein that is found in your tendons. It's found in our blood vessels and also our skin for to provide some strength. Uh, you also have uh, antibodies. Yes, that looks that is an antibody protein. That's a three-dimensional representation that we have created. And we also have something known as, you may have heard of this one before, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is basically a protein that transports oxygen in our red blood cells and that looks that is how hemoglobin looks like. So as a student, you may go, oh, okay, each of these are proteins. Uh, they look different and they carry out different functions. So how do you try to describe their structures? 
uh, you may look at the glucose transport protein and try to attempt to say that it is, uh, well, it looks wiggly, all right? It looks wiggly. Collagen just looks like pretty ribbons. <laughs> and uh, hemoglobin basically looks like, you know, tangled, coiled ribbons uh, put together. Uh, that looks very frustrating. And when you try to cover antibodies, you're like, oh, God, no, let's, yeah, that just looks difficult to describe. Now, the beautiful thing is, even though all the structures look complicated, there is a way to describe them. We can actually describe them by breaking them down into their component parts. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's, so try not to, just, just keep a mental note of this image, okay? And what we are going to do is we're going to try to break down the proteins into their fundamental structures.